Hey Pectus Warriors, it's Riley Byrne from FixPectus.com. In today's video, I wanna run you guys through the top 10 exercises that I would recommend if you wanna start exercising to improve your case of pectus excavator. Firstly, I just wanna say these are the top 10, but in order to truly improve the look of your pectus with exercise, with training, it's beyond just 10 magical exercises. I always get asked what are the best exercise there is no real best exercise. It's about an overall program, the way you combine the exercises, your form on the exercises, your intensity in your sessions, your nutrition, are you eating enough calories? Are you eating enough protein? Are you stretching? So these 10 exercises will give you an idea of good exercises to be implementing in your training, but just know that these 10 exercises are not gonna get you the result. If you're not implementing a proper program with the proper ratio of chest to back, with the stretching, with the enough ab and oblique training, with the enough volume for the appropriate muscle groups for your pectus, and, and with the nutrition strategy that will enable you to facilitate lean muscle growth, okay? So it's not gonna be the miracle fix you want if you just start doing these 10 exercises. When I program for my clients, I have hundreds of exercises that I implement in different training programs throughout four week different training cycles. And we're always changing things up to ensure that the law of accommodation doesn't make us plateau, okay? So it's very important you're always changing up your exercises, okay? But these are probably, if I, if I could only do 10, these would be the 10 I would choose, okay? And so we're gonna start with the dumbbell pullover. Now the reason this is the first exercise on the list is because if I was only gonna do one exercise for pectus, it would be this one. And the reason it's so great is because it hits really the main muscle groups we're trying to hit, which is the chest and back. Also the way I get my clients to do it, there's a bit of core activation as well as an added bonus, okay? And so the way I get my clients to do it is lying across the bench rather than like lying on the bench, you just have your shoulder blades on it and then you have to use core stability to maintain a nice neutral torso as you're doing the exercise. Okay, and so the reason I like it is you get a really big stretch on the chest as you're pulling overhead Okay, and this helps really open up your chest and You can feel your chest and your pectus opening up as you're doing this stretch Then as you contract back down and you bring your arms back through You can really focus on the adduction and get the chest engaging as well So we're stretching the chest we're engaging the chest and building muscle tissue there But at the same time the primary mover is going to be your lats and your back Okay, and so obviously developing the back is very important And so we're getting an exercise that's not only developing the chest and the back and the reason developing the back is important is because posture is such a big element of making pectus look better just through exercise and stretching and so what happens if you just do chest exercise and not enough back is you get really rounded over and that makes the indent look worse and so with this exercise we're hitting the chest but also the back at the same time so it's already counting that we're also getting a good stretch on the chest and you really just do the exercise and you'll feel it you'll feel it in your ribs you'll feel it in your sternum you'll feel like it's making a difference to your pectus and there's a reason like Arnold Schwarzenegger the most famous bodybuilder of all time talks about the pullover being one of his key exercises as well. So it's really the, the, the number one that I would recommend on this list. Then the next movement I would go into is a cross grip press. I made a video on this recently. Uh, for me, I just feel of all the pressing variants, I feel my chest most and I also feel it really in my inner chest. And I feel like I just get a really good pump in my whole chest. Now, so I really like this exercise. I think it creates optimal adduction by squeezing them together and you're just able to get a better mind to muscle connection with your chest, which I find most people struggle with, especially when it comes to a press. A lot of the time a press, people are feeling their anterior shoulder or their triceps, but I find with this one, for me even, I feel it most with my chest. Like I can get a crazy burn on my chest. So I love doing like drop sets with this exercise or adding it to a superset with like a normal dumbbell chest press. I think it's a really great exercise and something I definitely recommend because obviously we want to develop our chest for pectus and this is one of the best pressing movements that I find I engage my chest with the most. The next movement is gonna be a cross body incline chest press machine, okay? The reason this is so good is because obviously with pectus, we're really wanting to build muscle right around the indent. And for me, I get an awesome pump and contraction on my muscle fibers in my inner chest, the non-spanning chest fibers when I do this movement. On top of this, the exercise is unilateral. So we're doing one side at a time. When it comes to pectus, most cases are asymmetrical. So unilateral chest exercises is a really big blueprint in my training, especially at the start. And so this exercise, we're able to even out any imbalance that may be there because we're able to hit the weaker side with the right stimulus and then only match that stimulus with the stronger side. So it's a really great unilateral exercise to even out an imbalance. It's a really good exercise to feel that mind to muscle connection in your chest. It's on a machine, so there's no like coordination necessary. Like if you just do it right, you set up the machine right, you sit across at the right angle, you can get an epic burn in your chest and it feels really good. And again, it's just going off feel for me as well. Like when I do this, it feels amazing. I get an amazing pump and it's definitely something I utilize throughout my years of training to get me to where I am, where I fix my pectus. The next exercise I'd recommend is, we're sticking with the chest theme by the way here. It's not all chest, but these are my favorite chest ones that I find are the most bang for your buck, is a high to low cable fly. 
Uh, the high to low cable fly for me, I really feel it uh, my chest the most in this position. I do vary the angles that I program for my clients and for myself for variety for the law of accommodation. But if I had to choose one angle on the chest fly, this would be it. With the high to low position, you're actually gonna be hitting your lower chest a little bit more. Getting the chest to separate from the ribs is really key uh, when it comes to pectus, okay? The rib flare is one of the biggest things that upsets people. And when you have a chest that's actually protruding and popping from your ribs, it really masks the rib flare and the indent all at once. And so getting that obvious separation, the defined pec muscle is really key. And I find this exercise really helps me build that lower chest and build the chest in general to help mask the pectus. Now, it, because it's an isolation movement as well, you're just really able to really isolate and burn out your chest on this. So it's another one that I find I really feel in my chest and so do my clients. And it's something that I implement a lot. Now, the next exercise, we're going on to back movements in this top 10 list now. As I said before, it's very important we're countering all the chest training that we do with back, okay? So in this, in this one, we're, we're focusing on a seated row, okay? That's probably, if I had to do one back exercise, my favorite, especially because rowing from an in-front plane, it's gonna have the most relation to your posture, okay? You're hitting your traps, you're hitting your mid-back rather than just lats, and I think that that's got the biggest carryover to posture, okay? Obviously, you're hitting your lats as well, but you're hitting really your entire back if you do a good seated row. And you're able to really focus on rolling your shoulder blades back and getting retraction and feeling that squeeze and feeling your chest opening up as you pull into your body, okay? And honestly, like, if you do this, if you do a session focused on back and like this movement in particular, afterwards you'll feel the postural benefit, okay? So that's why it's in there for me. The next movement is face pulls, exact same reason, the posture benefit. If you do a face pull right, you externally rotate your shoulders, you pull it all the way, you heal your rear delts and your shoulders activating a lot, developing the rear delts, developing that external rotation, it's gonna be really key, okay? And uh, it's, a, it's a big part of the posture and the posture is a big part of this pie. So face pulls is a huge one um, that I definitely program for my clients a lot. The next movement is the side plank, okay? I always talk about abs. If you've watched me for a while, you'll know how important that is because developing your abs really helps mask the rib flare, okay? It also helps mask the indent as well when you have like developed upper abs. And for me, I find the obliques though is the biggest thing when it comes to rib flare. And so the side plank hits your obliques great, hits your core great, and it's an amazing exercise, okay? So the side plank would be probably my favorite ab exercise or one of, and it's definitely why it's included in this list, okay? Great way, easy one that everyone can do. You can do it at home, you can do it right now, a nice side plank. The next exercise, sticking with the ab theme now, is the ab wheel rollout. Again, I've talked about this exercise for years. I think it's a great exercise. I actually personally feel something in my sternum when I'm doing this and I'm stretching out it all the way at the full range of motion. And then it's just a huge ab burn when you do it properly with the right form. Uh, it's a great exercise to engage your abs. So the ab rollout is a definite in my list for training for pectus excavatum. And then the next exercise while we're sticking with abs and obliques is the cable Russian twist, okay? This exercise is amazing. I feel the biggest burn in my obliques of any exercise when I do this one. It's really great. It's important we're doing rotation in our training just for overall athleticism and well-being. And developing your obliques, as I said before, is key for the rib flare. So this is a must that I do for all my clients in their program. And so, and so that's nine exercises. I gave you three chest exercises, three back exercises, three ab or oblique exercises, and then the dumbbell pullover, which is a little bit of all three, okay? But mostly chest and back. Now, the last exercise, because I know some of you are just gonna take these 10 exercises and just do them, which is, as I said at the start of the video, is not what I recommend. <laughs> okay, get a proper program, sign up to my coaching. Link is in the description. But just because I know some of you are probably going to do that, I thought I'd better throw in a leg exercise because we want to be training our legs. We want a well-balanced physique. Sure, we want to focus on pectus, but we don't want to neglect other muscle groups, okay? Um, and so th this leg exercise, though, is going to give you more bang for your buck because there's going to be a hormone release. So if you do big compound movements, I find uh, studies show that there is a release of muscle-building hormones, testosterone, okay? And so for me, what I found was a huge shift in my ability to build muscle was when I started tracking my calorie and protein intake. And also when I started doing big compound movements and focusing on getting stronger. And I think there was definitely a hormonal carry over there. And so I experienced this for myself personally. And I think it's important that you're focusing on getting strong, guys. Getting stronger on these lifts plus eating enough calories is really key. And so this exercise though, it's working your legs. You're getting that hormonal benefit from like a big compound movement where you're moving off lots of weight. But also it's working your core like crazy, okay? Just as well as a plank can work your core if you do this right, without a belt, full range of motion, proper bracing, and it's the front squat, okay? The front squat is a really underrated, really amazing exercise. 
that I program for my clients a lot. It's tough to do, so you need to be a little bit more experienced with squatting and proper technique. You need better wrist mobility to do it properly, but honestly, it's an amazing exercise and you really get a burn in your core. And so anyway, that is the last exercises on my list of 10 exercises. I hope this video was helpful, gives you some insight into how you should be training properly. As I said before, really, if you want to get a good result, I would just recommend you book a strategy call with me so I can meet you and then run you through the coaching options um, that you can proceed to be coached by me, get a program, everything you need, and you'll get an amazing result. Um, anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. Give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.